The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, one of the great messages that comes to us again and again throughout Scripture is God's great desire to gather his people unto himself. From the very beginning, he sought to gather his people, especially choosing the people of Israel. He desired to be their God, they his people, wishing to gather them together. And so, of course, the image of shepherd appears in Scripture again and again. God, the good shepherd, gathering his flock to himself, leading and guiding and caring for them. Indeed, we also have God chastising those who are working against this effort. In our first reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, we have Jeremiah chastising the leaders, those who were not doing the Lord's work, those who were scattering and misleading. The Lord chastised them because their role as leaders was to do his work, to assist in that work of gathering the people together and leading them and guiding them and caring for them. So he chastises those who work against his efforts. And then we have, of course, the Good Shepherd, Christ, come among us to continue this work, to bring it to fruition, to, to even do many of the works of removing some of the barriers between people, between God, that people may indeed be gathered together. We hear of Paul speaking of this in our letter to the Ephesians, that there, were, there was a divide between Jews and Gentiles. There was the law that divided them. Christ, in his blood, created a new covenant that removed that divide, that gathered all people unto himself. There was no longer that divide of the law to separate them. He wished to gather them together. And of course, there were other divides that he removed, the divide of sin that separates us one from another and from the Lord. In his forgiveness, he removes that divide. And in his death and resurrection, he removes that ultimate divide of death, creating a way through to fullness of life in the Lord. So God, Christ in his own mission and ministry was doing just that work of the Father, gathering people unto himself. The wonderful news as well, brothers and sisters, is that this, this desire to gather all people to the Lord, this rests in our own desire as well. Deep in our own hearts is this desire to be gathered unto the Lord, to be drawn together with one another in the fullness of life in God. When we sit and reflect and dig deep into our own heart's desire, this is the great hunger that we each hold. St. Augustine said it so well. He said it of himself, but it applies to all of us, that our hearts are restless until they rest in him. We have this restlessness, this hunger, this great desire to find our eternal rest in God, to be gathered unto him with one another. The great tragedy, though, is that often one of the greatest things that hinders us in being gathered unto the Lord is our very own self. We hold back, we hesitate from being drawn to the Lord. We may recognize our great desire for the Lord, we may recognize his great desire for us, but we hesitate and hold back. There are many parts of that, but I'd like to believe that at the very heart of it, one of the key things is a struggle with trust. We may recognize that we desire to be gathered to the Lord, but if we are going to be his sheep, he our shepherd, there's a certain turning over of control to him, allowing him to lead and guide and direct our lives. That seeding of control, all of a sudden we recognize that there's a great commitment that we're making there. That's giving God a whole lot of control in our lives. We don't know exactly what he's going to do with us, through us. 
we become a little scared. And so all of a sudden we see such a great commitment that, require, that is required of us giving our life over the Lord, and then we start to question, we start to wonder. Well, if I'm going to make this great commitment, is he really who he says he is? Is he really who we proclaim him to be? Is his way really the way that's going to lead me to that which I long for? Is his way even possible? We start to question, we start to doubt, we start to wonder, because we recognize what a big commitment it would be. Not only that, it's reasonable that we would start to question and wonder, because when we look down that road of discipleship, we also see that it's going to be difficult, that it's not going to be easy. For us to follow, for us to follow the Lord in our day and time is not easy. It may set us apart. It may set us in conflict with others. To do what is right and good is not always easy. Making the sacrifices we need to make to do what is right and good is difficult. It requires sacrifice. To turn out from ourselves in love of God and love of neighbor is a Herculean effort to move out from our own sinful and selfishness, something that even our own world doesn't always encourage. So to do, we look down that path of discipleship and we recognize that it's going to be difficult and all of a sudden again, there's a commitment, there's a difficulty, and we start to wonder, do we really want to go down that way? But the reality is, brothers and sisters, it's not just in our own day and time that it's difficult to be a disciple, that it's difficult to follow the way of Christ. It was difficult for Christ himself to follow his own way. It wasn't easy. Even looking at our own gospel today, we have Jesus trying to take his disciples away for just a little bit, a little rest, a little reflection, so they may be energized to go back to do the work that they were doing. And they don't even get that. The crowds hear of where they're going. They go there before him. There's no rest for them. There's such a desire for what it is that he has to offer. And that's just a little bit of part of the tr struggles that he had in his own work and ministry. There were right, those regular times where he was set into conflict with the people of authority. Who are you and how dare you come proclaiming anything? Who are you and how dare you do what it is that you do? How dare you challenge our own way and our own teaching? And then, of course, at the end of his life, there is the abandonment, torture, and crucifixion. Christ's life was not easy. The life of his disciples and all those who have come after him have not been easy. There were many struggles and trials and tribulations along their way as well. And looking at this, it only affirms this reality that following the life of Christ, following as his disciples, is going to be difficult whether it's now or tomorrow or whenever. But brothers and sisters, there's really solid reason for trusting in the Lord and moving forward in discipleship, giving our lives over to him despite the great commitment that it requires, despite the difficulties that it may bring forth into our lives. Because when we look to the life of Christ, we also see God's great power to bring life and healing and wholeness when those sacrifices are made when that difficult road is taken. We then look also to the lives of the saints, the apostles, all those who have come after them, and see again and again the great good that comes from those following after him, and God's great power to lead and guide and protect them along the way. We also see the wonderful fruits that come of those sacrifices made. And there's something more. There's a great sign that we have before us often there's a powerful witness that this is the, the road to travel. And that's the cross. On the cross, we see God's great power to save, God's great power to bring life out of struggle, out of hardship, out of even death. That our God is the Lord of life, is the Lord of even death. That he has the power to save, that power to bring forth from even death itself, life and wholeness. Way back at the beginning of the Congregational Holy Cross, Blessed Basil Moreau gave the congregation the cross as a wonderful sign to bear before us. He knew that as he sent his community out into the world as missionaries, we started in France, he was sending out missionaries right off the bat, even to the frontiers of northern Indiana here, sending out these missionaries to Canada, to Bangladesh. He knew that they would encounter difficulties along the way, and so he told them to bring the cross before them. He gave us as our motto, O Crux Ave Spezunica, Hail the Cross, our only hope. 
Because as they went out there, they would encounter those difficulties. But carrying the cross before them would have that witness of God's power to save. God's power to bring great good out of struggle and trial and tribulation and even death. My brothers and sisters, the cross isn't just a wonderful, powerful witness for the congregation of Holy Cross. It's a wonderful, powerful witness for us all. That we continue to look to it, to have it before us in all that we do as we struggle to follow the Lord in all that we do. We look to the cross again and again and again we see God's power to save, God's power to bring life, God's power to bring resurrection in any little or large death. We recognize God's great desire to gather us in. We recognize our own great desire to be gathered in. But we're also honest and recognize that that's a big commitment, that following after the Lord is a challenging way. But just the same, we recognize God's great power to save. And so we place our hope in God's power to save. We place our hope in God's ability to bring life out of suffering and struggle and pain and death. We place our hope in the cross. And in doing so, then we are able to boldly follow as our shepherd leads. 